this is um, this is a miracle. And when I say it's a miracle, I mean it literally. This is not like a figure of speech. Your consciousness, you being here right now physically, we being present, nothing less than a miracle. The difference is whether you're aware of it, conscious of it, you feel it all the time, and you can draw energy from it, or you're not. So we're challenged in this day and age, you find unconsciousness. A lot of things that we're doing nowadays, just out of habit, out of things that other people have passed on to us, and we didn't digest, we didn't fully understand, we just swallowed, and we're doing it. We look at the state of the world right now, it's in shambles. I mean, lack of trust, uh, lack of faith, wars on the horizon, Economy, but the biggest thing I want you to pay attention to is the lack of trust that we all, or most of us, experience and feel in our society. And uh, I'm here just to remind you, I'm not here to teach you, I'm not here to tell you anything that you don't know in your spirit, in your origin, in your divine soul that is ancient and eternal, that preceded anything that is happening right now in this world. Of physicality. Our job here today, for me, if there's one thing you're going to remember, is faith and trust comes from you being united with God constantly. There's no separation. It's not about church. It's not about religion. It's not about anything. This is a direct relationship between you, your brain, your heart, and the divine. And this is an experience. God is an experience. God is not knowledge. God is not theology. God is not a belief system. God is an experience. So think of it like a loving relationship. You could read all the books you want to read about love and falling in love. And you could even watch movies about that, but that does not get even close to actually falling in love. So the question to all of you and the challenge is, what if, what, what if you're actually capable and equipped from birth to be united constantly with the divine power that we call God? I want you just to contemplate that for a little bit. There's an ancient prayer from the Middle East, biblical, ancient times, most likely Jesus was aware of it. All prophets were aware of it. And by the way, any prophet that you read about in the Bible, in the Torah, and all the holy books, every single, every single one of them was connected to the divine power that I'm talking about. All the time. And they brought it to earth. Have you ever 
concerned that a lot of your information has been handed down to you by other people. So how do you know that the information that you took inside is actually real 100%? And you've never experienced it. How do you know it's actually real? How do you know that actually God is real? Faith based on what? Faith has the ability, it's probably the closest thing to mental magic on planet Earth. Nothing goes higher than faith. Faith has been called the head chemist of the mind. The head chemist of the mind. That comes actually from the book of Think and Grow Rich. One thing you want to focus on. So let's, let's simplify things. Most of us here, we have issues, we have struggles, mental health issues, financial issues, um, maybe lack of confidence, maybe depression, maybe anxiety. They say in the of America, we have between 50 million to 80 million people who struggle with mental health. Oh my God. Nobody. Did he have a book? on how to pray, or how to talk, or how to connect, and what to experience, and what to feel. You know? He had a direct relationship with God. Let me tell you how that works. And the reason I'm telling you how it works, because that's by my experience, myself. And God is my witness. We're right inside. He's already right outside. But he's neither inside or outside. He's everywhere. And words are terrible in describing the experience of God or consciousness or infinite intelligence or the unmanifested or the unknown. I like to call it the holy name. The biblical term for it specifically is Hashem. We don't like to just pronounce the name of God as if we really know what we're talking about. I mean, let's be realistic. Our little tiny brain, a little spark that came from the divine, we're all one by the way, there's nothing that I know that you don't know already in your spirit. Nothing. My job here, all this time training and praying, is to remind you. So this is a matter of you remembering your origin. Your origin is divine. That I can tell you. Divine origin. Divine origin. You come from royalty. You come from royalty. You come from royalty. It's a divine origin. It's a divine origin. Wake up. Don't let the world tell you all these other stories about depression and anxiety, what you should be doing or not doing, and who you compare yourself to or not. Come on. I mean, if you're happy with the world, go for it. If the American dream is your dream, go for it. My dream is God's dream, is consciousness, is to be glued and to be connected to God all the time, 24-7. It's a level of insanity. I tell you what, there's no higher sobriety and consciousness than that. None. It's the only game in town that I know. It's the only game that I'm playing. So when it comes to wealth, which we'll talk about it later, I have achieved some financial wealth in my life, and when I say wealth, like millions of dollars, not because I'm brilliant, not because I'm the nicest person with the best smile, it's mainly because of the will of God and dwelling in that state of mind and letting go of me being clingy, of me being addicted to the world, addicted to the physical form, it's all the stimulation. It's me getting away from that with the help of God to disconnect. Even though I'm still part of it, I want to help. I want to play the game, but I'm not in love with the game. I'm not attached. That's a key word. Not to be attached to anything physical. Zero, including your body. Including your body. Because guess what? It's all going to be left behind. Now, 
Well, what, what are you going to do? I mean, if you're worth $10 million, or well, your net worth is $10, and the two people die today. So we're all aware of that little statement. Yet somehow your mind, when you step out of this place, you forget and you go back into the matrix. You get busy, you do your job, then everybody stop talking and repeating the same exact thing. That's what we call herd mentality in psychology. Herd mentality. That meaning whoever controls the media or leadership, whatever they're talking about, that everybody else starts talking about. Why don't you do your own homework? Why don't you do your own homework at home when nobody's watching you? That's school. School is an institution. At home, do you study? Do you read? Do you pray? You say, I believe in God. And let's say you spend five minutes with God. Do you really truly believe in God? Do you really know God? Let's be logical and realistic. If you say you love your wife and you spend five minutes with her per week, do you really love your wife? You might think you do. It's an illusion. It's a delusion. There are a lot of delusional beliefs out there. So you have to get real with yourself, right? You have to get real with yourself about your beliefs. You have to get real with yourself about your body. You have to get real with yourself about your finance. You have to get real about everything with yourself. And you're the only one who can make that decision. You have to have that design. You have one shot at it, so to speak. We're here. I mean, what else? What other more important things we really need to be doing? Well, if you can't figure out the meaning for your own life, the purpose, if you can't have energy and vitality most days than not, when you're on naturally, oh, we need the world to sustain our energy. Hence all these mental health issues in our society, in our country, in the world. This is a human problem. It's not an American problem. It's not a Chinese problem. It's a human problem. And people are waking up. People are waking up. And when it comes to wealth, let me tell you this. The more spiritually conscious you become, the easier it will be for you to accumulate wealth. Let me repeat it. The more spiritually conscious you become, the more wealth you will accumulate. Easier, with less stress, and hassle. I could show you 10 millionaires, all the different levels, but the way they reach their fortune is through polluting their body in a world for the sake of hitting their first $1 million. They also polluted their surrounding, toxic emotions, people that they hurt and damaged along the way so they could reach that goal. Is that a good way to do it? Is there a better, healthier, you know, a little bit more relaxed way? Right? And I'm a pretty intense guy. I mean, I step out of bed ready to devour. If I was able to train myself to become Conscious, let me tell you this. All of you can do it. For sure. It's, it's, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And then you enjoy the ride. And then you experience more things. The soul, your soul is on this planet to expand, to grow, to experience more. To experience itself and to experience the divine origin of itself. So a lot of us, what we call in uh, sacred texts, sleepwalking. Sleepwalking. That's why uh, once I really realized that and I experienced that, my anger dissipated. I used to be really angry against the world, atrocities, wars, you name it. I was born in Nazareth, Holy Land, 